Hi, my name is Brian Dick. I'm a software engineer, and this is my YouTube tutorial series on solving the HackerRank interview preparation kit problems. We're currently going over arrays, and today's problem is the New Year chaos. This is our first problem that has a difficulty of medium. So let's get to it. It's New Year's Day, and everyone's in line for the Wonderland roller coaster ride. There are a number of people queued up and each person wears a sticker indicating their initial position in the queue. Initial positions increment by one from one at the front of the line to N in the back. Any person in the queue can bribe the person directly in front of them to swap positions. If two people swap positions, they still wear the same sticker denoting their original place in line. One person can bribe at most two others. For example, if N is equal to eight, and person 5 bribes person 4, the queue will look like this. 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, 7, 8. Fascinated by this chaotic queue, you decide you must know the minimum number of bribes that took place to get the queue into its current state. So essentially, all we're doing is we're writing a function called minimum bribes that is going to print, not return, but print the integer that represents the minimum number of bribes necessary to achieve this queue. And unlike previous problems, if the answer is too chaotic, meaning that there is somebody that had to have bribed more than two times, then we are going to simply print out too chaotic. Um, so the input format, I don't really care that much. They handle most of this work for us. Also, I don't understand what this subtask is. It says for 60% score, one is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to uh, a thousand and for a hundred percent score n is less than or equal to uh, 100,000. I don't really know what this means exactly, uh, but we're going to just solve this problem as a whole. And um, so here's our sample. And since this is a medium level problem, I suppose we should probably take a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this just a little bit more. Oh, that might be a little too much. Well, let's see. Okay. So we have a sample input here. It's two, five, Two one uh two five two one five three four, whatever. So we get we're given two arrays, and then our output is three for that first array and two chaotic for the second array. Well, for the explanation, uh, the first array starts off as normal one two three four five. It, the person five takes place of person four, so we get one two three five four. Person five takes place of person three, we get one two five three four. And then person two moves one position ahead by bribing person one, two, three, five, three, four. That's a total of three bribes and everything's A-OK -okay. because five did do two, but he did not do a third. So test case two, no person can bribe more than two people, so it's not possible to achieve this input state. They, it would be nice if they gave us a uh, breakdown onto why this is impossible, but we can see that five moved one place, two place, three places, and if it's moving three places, then clearly he has skipped the line a little bit. All right, so let's go down here and let's solve this. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller now. I think right about there is good. Uh, and I'll make this bigger this way. Cool. All right, so a simple way of solving this problem, there's a lot of ways we can go about this, but I think the simplest since we know no but person can move more than two spaces in their line, I think we should write out the expected person at the positions we're gonna be checking. Uh, so we'll denote int p1 is equal to one, for example. That's what we expect to be the first position. Uh, int p2 is equal to two. That's what we expect in the second position. And int p3, is equal to three. Now, if the reason this is useful for us is we can start at the beginning, check position one. If position one is not equal to one, then it can be at most three. And if it's beyond three, such as four, then that means that this is an invalid, uh, an invalid queue, which means we just return two chaotic. And once we, if it is in one of these, then we simply will increment all of the positions that we already have up to, that we've found up to, and then keep going. So 
we're also going to want to keep track of int total bribes. It's equal to zero to begin with. All right, so we are going to do a for int i is equal to zero. i is less than q dot size and increment i. So now we're going to work out this logic that I was talking about. So we're going to start off with an if statement. If uh, q sub i equals p1, in this condition, uh, 1 is equal to 1. We can think of it like that. So 1 is equal to 1. So we don't do anything. Uh, we haven't had anyone bribed yet. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to go ahead and increment p1. And wait, no, we're going to say p1 is equal to p2. Uh, p2 is equal to p3. And we're going to increment p3. So the reason this makes sense is now we're just going, if we were originally looking at the positions one, two, three, well, now we have checked one, one is one. So now we can just erase this. We know he's in place. And now we're wanting to look at two, three, and four. So in this case, our one became two, our two became three, and now our three became four. And that's exactly what we want to happen. Now let's say our first value was not what we expect to be in our first position. So we'll say else if, uh, if q, oops, if q sub i is equal to the second position or p2, in this condition, our total bribes goes up because that means somebody bribes someone here. So we'll just say increment total bribes here. And then uh, we are going to want to say uh, P2 is equal to P3 still. And we're going to increment P3. So in this case, what has happened we were expecting to have one, two, and three. We did not see one. Instead, we saw two. So we could potentially look like this. So we might look like this. We don't know exactly what we look like, but we might look like this. So since we might look like this, we've seen two, position two. So we're gonna erase position two. We're gonna say two, uh, we're going to keep one as one and we're going to say two could be three and then the next position could be four. So this is now what the possible things our Q could be. All right. So now let's say it wasn't that condition and we have an L another else if, if Q sub I is equal to position three, P three. So under this condition, we had, we were looking at these three values, the first three, one, two, three. We did not see one, we did not see two, but we saw three. So we could have this situation. Three bribed itself twice to get to the front of the line, and then we have one and two following it. Three goes away, and then we simply need to look at one, two, and four for the next position, because those are the next set of valid positions. Now, uh, if this is the case, we are going to set total bribes plus equals two, because it took two bribes to get to this position. And then we're going to simply increment P3. There's no swapping around because our P1 and P2 are still our expected P1 and P2. Now, in this final case, we have an else, because this is a blanketed else. If any other situation occurs, then we had to have more than two bribes to obtain the state. So we're going to do our C out um, to chaotic. To chaotic and and L. So under this, if we did not go into the first if or the else if or the else if. So if 
Q sub i is not what we expected to be in position one, two, or three. That means we had to have more than two bribes in order for this condition to occur. So we're going to go ahead and print out two chaotic, and then we're immediately going to return. That way we don't keep going through this loop. Outside of this for loop, way down here, we can do a C out of total bribes and an end L. And we can run this code and this should work. Oh, compiling error, what did I do wrong? Uh, did I forget a semicolon? I feel like I forgot a semicolon somewhere. Now I got P3. What's wrong here? Comparison of integer expressions of difference signed, signed. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. We have to do an unsigned int here. I forget uh, C++ stuff. Unsigned int. There we go. That should run. Another compiling error. Uh, that's line 17. Ah, right here. Another semicolon. It's the little things. Little things get in the way. There we go. Passed all, all the sample, sample cases, cases and let's go ahead and submit, submit our code. code. And we have passed all the test cases. So that is our first medium level problem in HackerRank. Uh, we'll have another medium problem next time. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about why the solution works, uh, please do not hesitate to ask them in the, uh, the questions or the comments below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible so I can try to clear up any confusion. If you like this kind of content and it helps you out, uh, please leave a like on this video and subscribe for more because I will be going through all of the problems in the interview preparation kit. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.